2010 Heartland Championship. Our thanks to Main Freight, to Toyota, still wet and forget, and also support from the Rugby Union. Ashburton in a very, very important game for Mid Canterbury. Thames Valley have come to town. Thames Valley have come to Ashburton today to take on Mid Canterbury. Now, Thames Valley haven't had a wonderful season, but a good win here today for them and another one again next week, and they could still be in the Lahore Cup. Mid Canterbury, on the other hand, they're sitting fourth uh, in the Meads Cup section, but the pack is closing and closing hard. And if they want to maintain uh, their aspirations of doing well in the Meads Cup this year, they're going to have to lift the bar today. Mid Canterbury, known to their supporters as the Hammers. The MC Hammers. Music fans will know what we're talking about. The rest of you are just scratching your head and wondering what the heck that's all about. Yeah, and so important the start here for Mid Canterbury. Got to put some doubt into the Swan Foxes' mind. Swan Foxes had a pretty tough season, to be honest. Gee, that's a good pair of hands there from Catherwood to take that pass that was fully flung at him by Thao Thao. And oh! Running straight into the space goes Koroi Tamana. Love the work rate throw, Mace, of the, the, the left winger, Koroi Tamana, there at the pick and drives here, some beautiful handling, some good offloads. Played in wonderful conditions here at Memorial Park today. Great to see those wingers in the pick and drive. They have that speed and acceleration. Once they break and breach around the ruck, they're clear. No one defending behind the ruck for Thames Valley. Simple try in the end. McKenzie flings a good wide pass and he's got them into space very early in the oh the little bobble and it just upsets the defence and Vainareri Christian Vainareri goes in for the try now look at the way the defenders are beaten by the mishandling yeah there were some poor passes here to be honest and, and Hanley you're right juggling but of course pushing across and then they got flat footed the Thames Valley defence Frank Barnes the assistant coach not so happy about that they should be pushing pushing rushing up on them, but as soon as they were flat footed, they were gone. They couldn't recover. The agility was gone. They couldn't come back on the left side where they needed to do, and the try was scored. Thames Valley through Wisniewski. He goes to ground in the middle of the 22. Now there's some space starting to develop here. Doke starting to run with the ball at number 10, and that's just creating. Some problems for the defence. Here he goes again, and they get it out wide. Wide it goes to Easton. Jeff, he gets this down. This is one heck of a try because he was covered all the way from mid-Canterbury. See mid-Canterbury, no one's going to the rucks. They're all spreading out in the wet-and-forget replay. Good hands, though, from the Swamp Foxes. He's looking confident. He is. Oh, I think it's down. That, I think that's Come right. on, referee. That trailing foot. Don't worry about the flag. The flag doesn't come into it here. Down there, foot down there, try. Well, the medic was in the way. Try. Oh, told you. Gone. Told you. Jeez, I worked hard there, Lance Easton. Well, he's a veteran nowadays, Lance Easton, so he should know how to score a try, and he does. That was a good one for Thames Valley. That wasn't quite so good for the Swampies, so 16 to 8 at half time and I think Thames Valley can be pretty pleased with that there was a while there that I thought that mid Canterbury were going to overrun them but they've held them out and then fought back themselves and got a try so good result at the end of the first half for Thames Valley well the pleasing thing for them is when they had an opportunity they took that opportunity and now it looks like the intent is just to run it out keep the ball in hand and see what they can do <laughs> and look what they're doing Solofa Makes 25 or 30 metres all on his own. And Doak, Doak, dummying his way through a gap. Looks up, finds support, finds more support out wide. Wisniewski. No way, what a line go. <laughs> what a line. <laughs> Gee, the little legs were pumping, weren't they? And that's given an opportunity out wide. Inside pass. Sam Stanley goes in. And they've drawn it up to within two. Great fight back this by Thames Valley. Look at this. Well, let's take a look at the wet and forget replay, and they are going to throw the kitchen sink at Mid Canterbury, the second 40. It is going to be fun and games if Thames Valley can keep this up. Offloading, just ball and play. I love the little pop class. See there, a la, who was that, Graham Murray back in the day? Remember to Stu Wilson? And then Stanley, the right winger in support. And that has gone 70 metres. 
Wasn't attracted it the other exciting way? stuff. Wasn't it the other way? Was it Stu Wilson? Was it Stu Wilson? Was it? Murray, I think. Yeah. Bottom right hand yeah. corner, yeah. Cardiff Arms Park. That's it. That's the one. Yeah. You are old. Gee, there's been some rugby played since then. <laughs> that was 1980. Mid Canterbury. They need to fight back. Oh, crikey. Charlie Donlin just dodged a bullet. Or an Exocet missile or something. Oh, terrific hands. Great hands sets Korotamana free. And the try has been scored by John Dampney. Well, he got a couple earlier in the season. He's got another one today. The hands you're talking about was Timmy Usick, Jersey 19, on the wet and forget replay. So nice right line. Lovely. Show and go. Catch and give. Ball out in front. Ian Dampney, class footballer, can play pretty much anywhere in that back five, can't he? I've got to say, I prefer him at number eight, but they've got him in lock forward for much of the season, and he does very little wrong. Good scrum. And off the back of it, for mid-Canterbury, goes Watson. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's over, a try. scored over the top of his head. Terrific effort. Nordquist. Now, how did Cody Nordquist get this down? Look at this. He's well, flip, on his back. Yep, yeah, flipped onto his back. So, initially, pretty good defence here from Thames Valley, but they just didn't hold him. Over the line enough just to dot it down. And it's another front row of Mace. Another one of your big boys, the big yeah. boppers, the big concrete mixers up front. Yep. Get themselves a meat pie. Yep. Running great support lines. Width is what they're looking for here. Oh, Wisniewski goes in, rolls over, gets it down. They're all bumping and <laughs> rolling, aren't they, over the try line? The front rowers. He scores some too. Yeah, he does. He scored for the season as we look yeah. in the wet and forget replay. I tell you what, I thought he was going to get the runaway of all time earlier on in the half when he made that massive run towards about where he's standing now. That's not a bad try for Thames Valley. Gee, they've had some good moments, haven't they, Thames Valley, in this game? They've had some good moments all through the season, but they've shipped 60 points two or three times, and that's a real struggle. Mid-Canterbury have won here today. Today we uh, won over Thames Valley 38-22. We got our five points, which we need, and we're already looking forward to next week against South Canterbury. Pretty complicated, the next week's draw. There's some very important games there. King Country aiming for a home... Uh, semi-final, Buller looking for a place in it, South Canterbury, Mid-Canterbury, Wairapa Bush looking for a Meads Cup, North Otago looking for a Lahore Cup, they're all aiming for the stars. We'll explain that a bit better before next week's show starts because just about every game has a bearing on the semi-finals that are only a week away now. One more week of round-robin play in the Mitre 10 Heartland Championship and we'll bring you all the highlights from all of those games right here at Main Freight Rugby. Same time, same place, next week.